Hey guys, this is Claudio Giuliano here, and today I am coming at you with this new video, and today we are going to be comparing and contrasting Microsoft's Surface Pro and the 10.5 inch iPad Pro. So uh, the i5 Surface Pro, which has no fan, and the 10.5 inch iPad Pro. Both of these machines came in 2017, and both of these machines are, are really my go-to uh, portable art tools. And these two machines really fall in a category that I call the portable art tool. And for me, uh, in, in order for uh, a, a tool to get this right, to fall in this category, uh, some major things have to line up. And really, 2017 was the year where these things started to line up uh, more than ever before. Now, a lot of you guys reach out to me and ask me, which one should you get? So this is a question that often comes up, and I wanted to do the video for those of you who asked. I want to compare and contrast both machines. I want to show you what I do on each machine. I want to show you exactly what I do on Surface, and I want to show you exactly what I do on the iPad Pro. Of course, we're going to be coming at this from the standpoint of the creative professional. So we're going to break this down for the creative. I'm going to show you, uh, you know, the things that I do on Surface in terms of, uh, you know, what I do. And I'm going to show you the things that I do on the iPad. Now, these two machines share a really interesting parallel where, you know, they have a lot of similarities. And then at the same time, they are really wildly different mantras of uh, device and tool. So um, we're going to talk about these. We're going to break everything down today as we always do. We're going to talk about the how, we're going to talk about the why, and we are going to break this down logically. These two machines are really uh, my two go-to machines. And, uh, you know, these are the machines that are close by me a lot of the time and these are the two machines that come with me when I travel and as I was saying before in order to kind of really fall under this portable art tool category some very specific things have to line up and that comes down to battery life that comes down to form factor and design that com comes down to the weight and that comes down to the power and in the past uh, you know, prior to 2017, we really didn't have a machine or a tool that lined up with these things. We didn't have any tools that had the battery life plus the power to get the real work done and the form factors that can be picked up and taken with you anywhere. And that's what we have with these two machines. So although I'm comparing the 10.5 inch iPad Pro with, with the Surface, a lot of what we talk about today will apply to the 12 inch iPad Pro as well. So when it comes to um, what they do, we have two really powerful machines that make absolutely no noise. They have no fans and they are easy to pick up, grab and go because of their designs, because of the form factors. Now, as I have the two machines laid out here, I want you to take note of the size of the 10.5, and this is always something I really tried to point out in the coverage that I've done so far, uh, far of the 10.5. And that is, if you look there, the 10.5 is not too much smaller than the Surface. Um, and that can be deceiving when you think about the 10.5 because a lot of people tend to think about the 10.5 like the 9, you know, they kind of mesh it together as if it's very similar to the 9.7. But, you know, there's substantial difference there in size. And when you see the two machines here laid out, you can see um, in a better way how big the 10.5 really is. Now, Surface is, of course, bigger, but... Uh, you know, I just wanted to point out the 10.5 is bigger than you might think. So it's something that, you know, you, you'll, you'll want to check out in person, um, especially if you owned the 9.7, because there is a substantial difference there. Now, we have two very different form factors in terms of design, the iPad being a true tablet form, a true slab form, and the Surface being its own unique form factor. Um, and... Um, 
both of these machines are really light and thin. One of them is lighter than the other, and of course that is the, the iPad Pro. The iPad Pro, the 10.5, is about a pound. And um, when it comes to ultimate portability, uh, you know, the iPad is hard to beat because it's razor thin, it's about a pound, and it has a lot of power. Now the Surface, for what it is and for what's built in it, um, it's still really light and thin, and it is still very easy to pick up, grab, and go. And what creates this balance for Surface is really, you know, one of its standout features and really its signature. And the signature of uh, the Surface is, of course, the kickstand. And um, that creates this balance, whereas the 10.5-inch iPad Pro is a tool that you can pick up with one hand work with it in one hand for an extended period of time. And that's where the balance is created with the iPad. Whereas with the Surface, you don't really use it in one hand. Um, and if you do pick it up with one hand, you're not going to keep it in that one hand for that long. And the balance that's created for Surface is with the kickstand, being able to set it up on the kickstand and use it on multiple angles. Now, with the iPad Pro, that's something you can really pick up and use in, in both landscape and portrait mode in one hand for extended periods of time. I don't really pick up the Surface and try to work with it in um, portrait mode a lot. Even though you can do that, it's something I find that I don't do too much. I really, uh, you know, set it up on the kickstand and... When I am working on it in terms of illustration, you know, it's usually when it's set up on the kickstand. And of course, you know, mixing that in with when it's set up as a full laptop. So they both have this balance. And, you know, the iPad also adds another layer, layer of balance where if you opt into getting the keyboard um, and when you set both of these machines up, that's where... Uh, things become similar. So iPad has, uh, you know, a layer of balance when uh, when it's set up on the keyboard, and then it has a layer of balance just because it's so light and thin. So uh, when it comes to the accessories, bo both of these machines have accessories. They have pens, and they have keyboards, and, and, and they don't come with the machines. You have to buy them separately. Now, um, when it comes to the Surface, the type cover is something that is you know more essential you know it, it, it's really kind of mandatory to get the type cover with the surface to complete the experience whereas you know with iPad when you get the accessories um, they're, they're not exactly necessary um, in terms of you know having to buy the keyboard cover now they when it comes to the pens and, and the pencil uh, you know I feel that you know you, you, you wouldn't want the iPad Pro without the pencil unless you absolutely don't do anything with an input device like that. Now, Surface has uh, a great storage solution with the magnetic attachment there, as I showed. And if you opt into buying the keyboard, you can magnetically attach the pencil to the, to the top, like I have it a, a, attached here. However, you know, the, the more solid solution and the more... Uh, uh, you know, reliable solution is the way that it's it, it's set up with Surface, um, and you know because if you don't opt into the keyboard, which a lot of people don't opt into the keyboard when it comes to the iPad Pro, um, you know you don't really have a, a storage solution for the pencil. Um, so opting into the keyboard gives you that, and it works out decent. But uh, you know, in terms of pen storage. Uh, for me, I have the Surface Pen, you know, attached to the side of it, and I, I find that it doesn't fall off easily. So when I am traveling, you know, it's still there and it's attached, and it's a really streamlined experience. Now, when both of the machines are set up next to each other like this, this is where things become a little bit similar, and, and they start sharing similarities. Um, but the processes in which you execute um, your workflows are very different, even when they are set up in this similar way. So um, the things that I do on the Surface Pro are pretty different than the things that I do on the iPad Pro and vice versa. And then there is a middle ground where 
uh, in some cases, I am doing the same exact thing on them, you know, like illustrating or something like that. Um, or, you know, from typing up an email or from writing something, you know, so there are instances where things are similar. So what we are going to get into today is um, we're going to talk about power. We're going to talk about the differences of the operating systems. Uh, we're going to compare and contrast the power of each machine. We're going to compare and contrast uh, the benefits of each operating system. And of course, we're then going to go into software and we're going to talk about um, uh, the, the specific processes uh, that are done on the surface in terms of creative software and the specific processes that are done on the iPad also in terms of uh, you know creative software and creation. So when it comes to the keyboards, I just wanted to mention this really quick. You know, I hope to see Apple redesign the smart keyboard cover from the ground up because it kind of feels like a foreign solution. It doesn't exactly feel like a unified thing. You know, the Apple Pencil feels like it's made for the iPad Pro, more part of the experience, whereas the keyboard kind of feels pretty foreign. And when it comes to Microsoft's type cover, you know, they've really been refining this for years and they've really gotten it to a place where it is, you know, high end in terms of material. It is extremely well built and it's just a great experience all around. The typing experience is fluid and fast and it feels just really good. Uh, it feels, uh, you know, really uh, satisfying to type on this. Um, the Alcantara looks great and you know, just in terms of design and build, it's very solid. So, you know, they're both expensive. The The iPad's keyboard is 150 and the, the type cover is 160 But Microsoft's really feels like you got what you paid for. So, I, you know, over time, I've become a little bit disappointed with uh, Apple's solution. Now, it's not bad or anything like that, but, uh, you know, I just feel like it could have been better. Now, it's not absolutely terrible. Once you get used to typing on it, it's streamlined, but I just hope to see it evolved and redesigned in the future. Now, one of the things that balances this out is the fact that Apple's hardware has a vast third-party market, and a lot of the stuff in this third-party market is of really good price and of good quality. For example, like what I'm showing here, you know, you have case solutions to where it streamlines the experience. They have uh, pencil storage solutions built in and holders for when you are in the act of working. You can set them up on multiple angles. So I just wanted to point that out. That is something that kind of uh, easily balances things out. And the more I use third-party solutions, the more I really enjoy them. So we are going to go right into system, and we are going to first start with operating system, and then we're going to move into software we're going to move into power and processes so what we have with the ipad pro is ios 11 what we have with surface of course is windows 10. now with ipad pro and ios 11 we really have uh you know a custom version of ios that is specifically set up for the ipad pro apple has brought in features from mac os baked them into the ipad uh, and ios 11 and and um, they've really made the, the operating system much more functional for creative professionals and just professionals in general, much more functional than it's ever been in the past. And in, 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 in the case of the Surface and Windows 10, Windows is in uh, a highly evolved place. It's really in the best state I've ever seen it in. And, you know, I've been a Windows user for 20 years. I've been a Surface user from the first generation. I've been an iPad user since the first generation. So both of these operating systems have a lot of benefits, you know, and, and the, the mantra of each, you know, they're really different and each one has strong suits. And I want to talk about what those are. Now, a lot of people classify both of these systems as two different things. One, a mobile operating system and the other, a desktop operating system. But we have now entered the modern day of development and things are really different. So pretty soon, we won't be re referring to uh, either operating system as a desktop operating system or a mobile. We're really just going to uh, be uh, classifying them as uh, their operating systems. And really what it will 
come down to is a matter of preference and the differences will really just be uh, a difference in mantra, a difference in UX and UI design. Um, so, you know, we're, we're getting very close to that state. So what are some of the benefits of iOS in general and especially with iPad? So, you know, with the iPad Pro and iOS 11, there, there's some major benefits, especially now that we have various full desktop professional software on the platform that many people use, many professionals use. And one of the things that you really start to appreciate, and you really don't realize this until you're using the iPad for an extended period of time, you know, over a couple of years, what, what you begin to see is how it truly fades away and how the operating system makes it so you don't really have to think about much other than you know, working. So you don't have to think about things like drivers. You don't have to think about firmware. It's always on. Uh, if you ever need a replacement, if your machine breaks, or if you're getting ready to upgrade, that next machine, when you turn it on, you plug in your information, all of your software is going to be there. All of your files are going to be there including the files in the you know in the cloud and also all of your native files are going to be backed up so you would get that new machine you turn it on all of your stuff is there when you turn it on and it's ready to go and there's really nothing like that uh, especially now that we have these full pro softwares here uh, you know that makes uh, a really big difference and whereas with with windows you know it, it, it's still set up in, in, in the same way it's always been, you know? So if you have to upgrade, if, if you run into a defect, you will have to install of all of your software manually. And, um, you know, you'd have to, you know, bring all of the files that you wanted back up, backed up. You'd have to really bring them in from the cloud. Now they have the cloud solutions built in with OneDrive and it works out well, but, you know, the files won't be saved natively when you turn the machine on. So, you know, uh, things like that with iOS make things really streamlined. And, and the other thing is Windows is still a system that you have to shut down. And uh, iOS and iPad Pro is a system that is always on. It never gets turned off. Um, only in rare, you know, on rare occasions do you have to ever turn it off. And it's instant on. Um so no drivers, you know, the best security really out there uh, with iOS. Um, so, you know, you, you're never going to have to ever think about uh, your iPad getting a virus or anything like that. Now, Microsoft security in Windows is highly stepped up, way better than it's ever been. You don't really have to worry there either, but it's still Windows and there is still that chance that something can get in there. Uh, but uh, it, it's, it's, it's in a much better state than it's ever been. Uh, the chances are much lower, but with iOS, you know, it's really solid security. So, a lot of benefits in these in, in, in these two areas. The flip side of that is Windows is uh, still a, a system that has uh, more functionality in terms of what it gives the user, uh, in, in terms of what the user can do. So you can go in and and do you know you know tweak deep settings. You can um, you know, you can mold the operating system in specific ways to your use cases and needs. And, uh, and it keeps a lot of its, you know, core mantras. It's, you know, the floating desktop, as I have my files out there, uh, you know, the windowed multitasking, you know, the, the, the way Windows has always operated. So, you know, the user has more ability when it comes to Windows, the user can tweak things. The user can do more there in terms of the operating system. And the mantra, when we look at the iPad and iOS 11, the mantra really uh, it is, is about the operating system coming forward to you, the user. If you look at it, you can even just see it there, how the operating system is really brought forward. You know, Apple does this and, in, 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 you know, and they kind of look at it, and at least from, uh, you know, what I get out of using it is they built it based off of a hierarchy. And that hierarchy is being, you know, putting touch at the forefront. 
uh, because the iPad is really mainly interacted with through multi-touch. And the operating system, as you can see there, is you can see that it's built for that. You can see that the hierarchy is bringing the system forward, put, you know, making everything else fade away, and um, bringing the touch experience, the immersive experience too. And the experience is immersive. So when you are actually working in a software, uh, it forces you to focus. It forces you to really just be focused in that software. Um, uh, and you really just find yourself getting the work done and you find everything else fading away. Even though there is multitasking and you can float a window in, it's a different experience when you're working on in, in Windows uh, with the way that it, it does multitasking because what happens is you're able to get distracted more. Uh, when, when you're working on a, on a desktop system, um, what happens is you wind up having a lot of windows open. You might be multitasking a lot. You might have one software open and another one open, and then you're browsing the web and you have multiple windows open there. Um, and so you kind of float in and out of things when you're working on windows. Whereas when you're working with the iPad, when it's in your hand, you know, you tend to be working in the one software that you're working in and maybe you float between a couple and that's really it. So, you know, different working mantra. And, um, and even in the cases where we have identical softwares for each platform, uh, what I find is the more immersive working experience winds up being on an iPad because of that. And I'm going to show you uh, some of that and I'm going to show you exactly what I mean there. So two very dif different operating systems, but both of these operating systems have major benefits. Okay guys, so let's get into it. So why is the Surface in my tool set? Well, one of the major parts is it heavily links back to my business. It links back to the shop, the way that the shop operates, and it links back to Adobe's Creative Suite, the, uh, the Creative Cloud, and the software. Of course, things like Adobe Illustrator, um, where I have hundreds and hundreds of customer files that you know that de date back a decade, you know, you know, long-term customers and their files, and and you know, having so many of them, uh, you know, using the mouse and the pen tool for various design processes uh, and 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 pure vector work because a lot of my customers' files are vector files, um, and a lot of design processes are done with the mouse and pen tool, and you know, the design process in general, it, especially when you have a shop environment and you have you know, many customers, this becomes a fast paced working environment and you have to get the work done fast. Um, and these processes, you know, date back over a decade. Um, and, and the shop is very heavily linked to, uh, you know, the, these processes and things like I'm doing here in Photoshop, fine precision selection with the pen tool uh, for template making and, and, and image editing. Um, you know, these processes are uh, absolutely essential to uh, the, the shop, the way that the business operates. Um, and these are, these are processes I couldn't go without um, because of that. Having access to the full web, having access to uh, things like Adobe Muse, having access to Dreamweaver, and just having access to the full web in general. Anyone, any of you guys who run websites, any of you guys who run websites that get a lot of traffic, where you get a lot of customers from your sites, and anyone who does sites for their customers and as part of their branding, you know, you know, you just need access to the full web, and that's not something you can access on on the iPad. Um, uh, you know, and you know, you can flush sites out in in a kind of wireframe sketch way on the iPad, but um, you know, you're not going to really be designing full blown sites that have deep features on something like the iPad. And you also need access to the full web for other things like, you know, like YouTube and uh, you know, various uh, th there's various other reasons why one would need access to the full web. So both of these tools are tools that you illustrate with as well. And this is where the sword fight begins. We have the Apple Pencil versus the 2017 Surface Pro Pen. And, you know, both of them are great for illustration. But for me, the ratio really goes to the iPad with the Pencil and the iPad Pro. Uh, and, and that's because it's a really true analog mimic. And there's logical reasons 
uh, and very specific reasons why the iPad uh, is really my go-to tool when it comes to illustration. Now that's not to say the illustration experience on the Surface is bad. When the Surface is coupled with a software that's set up for its pen with Windows Ink, it becomes good. Still not quite as good as the pencil though uh, in, in, in a lot of key areas, but, uh, but still good in, in, in a lot of ways. Um, so, you know, we have this separation where, you know, there's the classic design process and, um, you know, there's, the, there's this classic design process like I was showing you before, and then there's the illustration process. And a lot of us designers are also illustrators and we are mixing illustration into our design work. Um, and then there are people who are just pure illustrators. And, you know, for the pure illustrator, it's really hard for me to not recommend the iPad Pro over everything else out there uh, for the pure illustrator. But for those of us who are multidisciplinary workers, where illustration is just one part or one thing that we do, um, this is where, you know, the Surface can cater to you. Um, and where I feel Surface uh, has the edge because it kind of caters to the multidisciplinary worker um, uh, a, a little bit more than the iPad. Uh, and, and, and that goes back to, you know, processes, uh, the, the process the processes that I was showing you earlier. The other thing is, if you really want to, you can push the Surface for power. You can max it out in a high power mode, and it can really blast through, you know, thousand pixel brushes, you know, complex brushes, and it can, you know, it can really push for power when it, when it needs to, but the Surface, uh, uh, the iPad can also push for power now too. Now that softwares are set up for Metal 2, you know, it's really uh, pushed forward in the power area. And since we have multiple full desktop softwares that are, you know, on the iOS platform now, um, you know, it's just, it's a really powerful machine. However, we still do have some limitations. Like for example, here we have a really large canvas open and because we have the four gigs of RAM, um, and, and because Paintstorm uses more resources than other stuff, we max out at 10 layers on this large canvas. However, there is a hack or, that you could do to work around that. You can start at a lower resolution and then put your amount of layers in first. Let's say you want 20, and then you can bump it up uh, to 300 afterwards. So I would like to see uh, more memory introduced into the future generation iPads. I'd like to see a minimum of 8 gigs of RAM. I think that would be a sweet spot. Um, now... The other thing is the experience with the pencil and Paintstorm on the iPad really feels like a different experience than the experience with Surface. It almost feels like a different software because of it, because it's they set it up so well for the pencil. Now, you know, I am I come from the analog world. Now, you know, when it comes to the graphic arts and illustration, and you know, these are things that I started and that I realized I fell in love with when at a young age, you know, when I was like 14, I realized this. Um, and, you know, I come from the analog world of working with a real sable brush, working with, you know, pencils in Bristol. Uh, and, and, you know, all these years that I've done this, I, I have never felt anything mimic the analog like Paintstorm and the Apple Pencil. It's the closest analog mimic I've ever felt. Now I'm also a musician, and as a musician, and I've done, you know, I, I've, I've done, you know, the music thing for just as long. Uh, I, I do both of these things in an equal manner. And as a musician, you're required to have feel, and, uh, you know, coming from the analog world and and just the the the, the way that I've learned how to feel things out at, th because of you know being a musician and a bass player and and also being a multi-instrumentalist you know when, when I am working here with the pencil and I when I analyze this stuff uh, you know I, I'm when I when I come to my conclusion and when I say that it's the closest analog mimic I've ever felt I'm really saying that with conviction uh, and I am truly a hundred percent convinced that it is um, uh, because I've, you know, I've, I've done it. I, I, I did the analog thing for so long. Um, now, when you couple 
like I was saying before, when you couple the Surface with a software that's fully set up for the pen, it begins to feel really good. Still not quite as good as the pencil, though. You know, you still get these kind of weird things uh, in, in certain areas. Like, you know, you still see pen jitter in various areas of the display. And not only, you know, doing diagonal lines, but you see this pen jitter on, on the vertical axis and on the horizontal axis as well. And um, in some cases, it you know, and, and this I just recently kind of discovered in this more direct comparison uh, because, you know, I mainly illustrate on the iPad Pro. And when, you know, when doing the testing for this video and really going back and forth, I've uncovered things that I really didn't notice um, prior. And that is the jitter is still definitely here. The other thing is the pencil's latency is also faster with ProMotion. Uh, what I find with the Surface is the latency is really determined by the power mode you were in. And it really slows down in low power mode. You can, you can see it here. I'm not, and I'm also in balance mode here, but you can see the latency. And you'll see the difference when I start working with the pencil. And you can also see the, the weirdness in those strokes there. You could see how the jitter was affecting them. Now here we are with the pencil. As I lay down my lines, the pressure feels exactly the same because I have it set up, you know, to uh, to basically feel how I want uh, through the deep uh, customization of Paintstorm. When I do these strokes, no matter the speed, you can see how organic they are. You can see uh, how I can capture the fine precision from the from the lightest end of the pressure to the full end uh, to the full end of the spectrum. So, you know, for the fine hairline detail to the to the larger end of the spectrum. And you can see how 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 good it's you know the strokes look in Paintstorm. Uh, but just you know that that that's a, a big part of this is the pencil. Um, because as I was showing earlier, if you if you caught that when I was making the lines in Paintstorm, you, you can also notice there with the surface pen in Paintstorm, they also didn't look as good. Uh, now, all around, you know, if if you look here and you analyze this, you can you can see the latency difference. Um, uh, you know, it, and and it becomes very obvious when you start going back and forth and testing them. Uh, it's not as obvious when you are just working on the one tool for, let's say, a couple days, and then you go run over to the other one. You you're working on the iPad for a couple days, but when you actually go back and forth, you can really see uh, the the differences in the input. You can really see where the Apple pencil pencil really it, it really wins in every area, and and that's just the logical breakdown of it. Uh, <clears throat> but you know, the Surface Pen this year is way better than it ever was. I just had to point out the technical reasons why I hold the Apple Pencil in such high regard. But either way, I still love working on the Surface when it comes to illustration. And that's because of the versatility that's built within it. And a big part of that is the kickstand, being able to illustrate on multiple angles. Um, you know, the versatility of the kickstand is big. And then another really big, powerful feature that the Surface brings forth is the extendability that the machine has, being able to transform it into a multifunctional, um, you know, uh, workstation setup like I'm showing you here. This is a really powerful, you know, you're able to map pen and touch over to the big display and turn the surface into a, um, a, pen, uh, a pen tablet and you're able to have touch mapped. So you can go from working with the surface on your lap to extending it, turning it into a bigger setup, and then suddenly you have this large canvas multi-monitor uh, setup where you know you can turn it into this in seconds, and, and then all of a sudden you have a large working canvas and work environment. And you know, this adds a lot of power. And this is part of the versatility that I, um, that I speak of, you know, being able to do things like this with the surface are, are, are big features and they're big features for creators. I am going to bring in the iPad display here and I want to show you this. And this kind of shows the, one of the powers of that, uh, of the iPad. I'm basically holding it here in one hand with just basically my fingers almost. 
And, you know, being that it's so light and thin, you can do this in one hand. You get that full screen portrait mode, which is really powerful. And then when you flip it, you get that immersive full screen uh, landscape mode. And if you look there, you'll see how the environment that I'm getting on the 10.5 is actually scaling out to be a larger working environment than what is scaling out on the surface. Um, and, you know, this is something that uh, I've tried to emphasize to you guys. You know, the 10.5 has a larger working environment than you might think because of reasons like that. Now, when it comes to these classic design processes, as I was showing you before, you know, these are things I do a little bit of it on the iPad, but not too much, especially when it starts getting down into working on multiple client files and things like this, because you're forced into vector work with the pencil tip. You're forced into layout work and design work with the pencil tip. And, you know, there's a lot of nuance when it comes to design. And I, I, I find that the iPad is uh, just not exactly set up to handle that you know a fast-paced design environment at this time um, you know you can do a few things on it you know you can certainly do a, a customer's logo on it I you know I do a lot of uh, you know uh, sketches in terms of client logos here on on the iPad and I've even started some of them in the vector softwares but um, uh, you know I still think you need a mouse for these processes, and, and, and if it does get mouse input, that will be powerful. So another big thing for me with the iPad Pro is with music and the iPad in general. When GarageBand first came and we have also a lot of third-party stuff that is very transformative for the iPad. And, you know, when this came, when GarageBand came for iPad years ago, this completely changed my process for music. So it changed both of my processes for art, illustration, and design, and then it also changed my music process and the way I write. And it's been hugely impactful. And this is another thing that I do with the iPad Pro that I don't do uh, with the Surface Pro. And really, nothing, there's really nothing out there that exists like GarageBand with the accuracy of the touch instruments, with their true analog mimics. I mean, the, you know, if you do music, the iPad just really caters to the musician as well. And that is going to wrap up our compare and contrast of the 2017 Surface Pro and the 2017 iPad Pro. So, you know, these are two great tools, and obviously I can recommend both of them. Uh, but I know a lot of you guys can only choose one or the other, and that's why I wanted to break down the more specific strong suits of each machine in today's video. And hopefully by seeing that, you'll be able to make your decision easier. I want to thank you guys for tuning in. I really appreciate it. It would be great if you can give this video a thumbs up. It would be even better if you can subscribe, if you can comment. We have a lot more coming and on the way, so stay tuned. Thank you. Have a great day.